Next up is going to be Bert Spann. So I think we have a new New Yorker, fellow fairly new New Yorker. He comes from old Amsterdam, um, and he's coming over now to teach us New Yorkers how to go and travel through time. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I moved to New York uh, three months ago. Um, uh, so I'm quite new in the city. Um, and I came here to work for NYPL Labs, the Research and Development Division of the New York Public Library. Um, and we have this two-year grant from the Knight Foundation to work on a project called the, the Space-Time Directory. Um, I will tell you what it is, but I think it, come it comes down to making a digital time machine way with which you can browse through the history of New York uh, using the collection of the library and find out how the city changed over the years. Um, so this is my name. I do have Twitter, but I uh, don't tweet uh, so much. Maybe somebody can teach me how to use it. Um, Okay, the, the New York Public Library. There's 90 branches across Manhattan um, and in Staten Island and the Bronx. And most of those branches, uh, people come to, to get books. Um, but there's much more to the library than just that. It's, it's a, research, a research library. So people come to do research on a uh, very um, wide variety of subjects. And in the, the main branch that we have on Fifth Avenue, 42nd Street, the Schwarzman Building, people come every day to our research divisions there to ask us complicated questions. Uh, like, literally, can you, ask, can you find out for me um, where my ancestors, on which cemetery they, they were buried? Uh, how, how did my, uh, uh, my street look 100 years ago? So they email us, or they come to our uh, branches and they ask us those questions. Um, we have librarians, of course, at work to try to answer those questions. And people, of course, also themselves try to answer those questions. And, um, we try to make their lives as easy as possible, so we work on new technologies to, to help them. Um, so this is one of the questions people uh, ask. This is another one. Um, people come uh, to the library with questions like this, this a lot. Um, so over the years we've been working on, on, on tools to help people. Um, of course, this used to be our search engine. Um, and, and it still is. And then, of course, there's people like this to help you. Uh, because if you come this is the Milstein Division in the Schwarzman building. If you come here and you see all those books, I mean, you really need to know where to, where to look. We have, of course, search uh, websites with search tools. You can find stuff, but still, you need to have some background information about what stuff actually means. And of course, that's what librarians help you to find out. Um, for example, we have lots of city directories. Uh, those books tell you where people lived, what they did, what their professions were, which addresses they lived. And many of those addresses, of course, don't exist anymore. Um, because streets change names, others just move over time. We have a beautiful collection of maps. Uh, this is a bit too light maybe to see, but it's a beautiful map of, I think, 1760 uh, Brooklyn and New York, M Manhattan. Um, we have lots of uh, archives. For example, this is a little book telling how much people that worked for the city made per year, doing all sorts of stuff. And for example, there is somebody that was the superintendent of lamps and gas, and he made $1,000 per year which I guess is a reasonable amount of money to make if you do that. Um, we have beautiful photos, too, of how the, street, the, the city looked. Um, um, and you, you, you can use all those materials to, to get answers to questions that, that I mentioned before. Um, but of course, uh, that's, that's cumbersome. You need to have lots of background information to, to do that and lots of handwork. So five years ago, is that correct, Mauricio? That's my colleague, Mauricio. Um, the library founded this research lab called NYPL Labs, and we helped the library to make, to make new tools where we can make sure that people actually find the stuff that were previously always hidden far away somewhere in the stacks in the basements of the building. And we make tools to, to, to service that, to put it on the internet and to make it ready for the 2016 or in the, in the future. Um, of course, the first step then is, because we have lots of actual paper materials, to digitize that. Um, we have this big digitization lab in Long Island City where there's I think, 10 photographers working uh, all day to, to take high-res pictures of all the materials that we have. But that just gives you TIFFs or high-res JPEGs. That doesn't really give you much. Well, of course, it's beautiful and it's, it's, it's great to have, but it, it's, it, it's not data. Um, and we have this uh, digital collections website, which is a portal where you can access uh, hundreds of thousands of beautiful, beautiful imagery. Uh, the books, the maps, photos, prints, paintings. Many of them uh, are in the public domain, so you can do whatever you like with them. You can put them on your t-shirt, you can sell it, whatever you like, and beautiful maps. Um, 
Second step is uh, getting those images and extract new information out of it. Do OCR, do crowdsource projects where people help us uh, to, to extract new pieces of information, information out of maps, for example. You can, of course, extract addresses, names of streets, um, stuff that you cannot do if you just have the, the JPEG image. Um, for example, we have this tool, which launched, I guess, seven years ago or something. Um, it's on maps.nypl.org, and you can go here, you can help us directify maps. So you can take old, old maps, sometimes going back 400 years, and you can position them on top of new Google Maps, so you can, you can twist them and rotate them. And in the end, this is a map of the Roman Empire. You can see that the original paper map, which was just a rectangle, is now a bit shared, and so that it fits over Europe. And I've, I think my lovely country is... So the Romans never made it above the Rhine, so they never made it to Amsterdam. Um, we have this tool made by Mauricio, which takes those georectified maps, and then people can... Uh, uh, help us type in information such as addresses, names of streets, um, names of buildings, and we get lots of data out of that. Um, this is another uh, project that just launched where we ask uh, uh, patrons to help us um, extracting data out of uh, data from the Emigrant City Bank. They have lots of data about uh, uh, properties and, and, and uh, mortgages and things like this. Um, we are working on this uh, data platform where people can, we can search for everything the library knows and you get data back. Um, and this is something which you can do afterwards. If, if you have all those maps and you have to align them over Google Maps, you can make animations like this. This is a little movie showing how Building Inspector works. So it shows you that people type in addresses. And by doing that, it helps us giving, letting us know where addresses were in 1850 because of course they have changed over time. Um, so that's all nice, uh, but that just gives us more data. And there was already so much data, so it just gives you more silos and more, it makes it, of course it's, it's great that all this data is there, but it makes it difficult because there are so many places to, to find it. So you still need somebody to, 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 com to let you combine it. Um, and that's what this, the space-time directory will do. It will uh, help people to, to create links between all those silos of geospatial and temporal data that the library has. Um, yeah, this is it. And um, it just started, the project is two years, and in the end, I hope uh, it will, so it will enable you to, to, to find out everything about the city. So it will, if you have the question like, how did my street look 200 years ago? Um, we have the photos, we have the maps, but so far there hasn't been one way to, to find it all, where it's all together. Um, so this is how I imagine the space-time directory, but what it should do, it should uh, ingest as much data as it, it can about uh, space and time in New York. So many uh, uh, New York Public Library data sets, such as um, locations of photos, maps from the directified website, but also other stuff like Wikidata, uh, geonames, um, and if you combine that together um, oh, and you put it into uh, a series of databases, then we can uh, use geospatial and graph technologies to, to compute new stuff. For example, um, if we have those high-res maps directified and we have a list of all the neighborhoods and how they change over time, um, only then, if you combine that, you can ask questions. Okay, well, my house 200 years ago, in which neighborhood was it? And, and give me the maps that my house should be on. Um, we are working on a, a new crowdsourcing tools. For example, this is one, something I've been working on. Um, it's uh, going to run in a little Chrome tab. So each time you open a tab, you see a beautiful image from these collections. And then we ask you, uh, do you know where this is? And uh, you can position a little, little pointer on a map. And you can help us uh, ge uh, geolocate our whole collection of, of beautiful photos and images. This is, I think, Penn Station before uh, they built something else there. Or, uh, um, yeah, so this is. Um, so the goal is to, to do all that, but also the goal is to, to it, space time directory will be an open data platform. So all the data that we collect from other data, uh, from other websites, um, and all the data that we will synthesize or infer or whatever you call it, that all those data sets will be available to download and you can do whatever you like with it. Um, that's one big aspect of the whole project. Um, of course, also we work on, we will work on APIs, uh, everything that we'll do will be open source. 
work on uh, new search tools, uh, discovery tools, uh, websites, tiny little interfaces to search for maps, to search for photos. Um, one example that I've been working on the couple, last couple of weeks, um, let's say you take directified maps, you take addresses from building inspector, you take city directories, so where people lived and what they did, and we have OCR versions of that, for five minutes I have, I'll, I'll be on time. Um, and if you combine that all, you can make this graph of, of, of addresses and streets and houses and, and all the people that live there. Um, so this is a city directory, it tells names of pe people, for example, Mr. Folger, he was a policeman, he lived on 73 Oliver Street. Um, this is a, a, a map that we put in Building Inspector to trace the building outlines and also the addresses. Um, if you do some regular expression magic, you can convert those city directories to actual addresses and street names. And you can put it on a big graph, and you can find out that this, at this one address, which is 216 Avenue B, there were Lots of people living there in 1855. So previously, you need to look through the whole book to find out who lived at one address. And now you can see that at this one address, um, lots of people were living, and also what they were, the professions. Um, I, well, in the 1850s, it, it just mentioned mostly uh, male. It's, uh, so the, the women were not in the book, especially uh, only if you were a widow, then you were mentioned in the book. Um, so of, of course, there were way more people living in that, that one house, but it doesn't isn't mentioned in the book. Um, this is something that was I just put on online yes, uh, last night. Let's try it. This is, uh, what this is, is a uh, really simple, simple and very ugly web viewer which just puts together all the data that I've been currently uh, working with and shows it on a map. So for example, this is all the rectified maps and you can browse and you can say, well, draw it. Um, we have photos too, so you can zoom in and you can see how the streets looked. Lots of photos, old houses. Um, but what is really nice, um, I can go to, uh, I can just show addresses, and we just have addresses for Manhattan and some parts of Brooklyn yet. Um, and then if I go to an address, I can ask the system, okay, we live there, and it says, can I maybe zoom in? So on um, this address, well, a few people lived. For example, Mary McLassen, the widow of Alexander, and uh, a few laborers, whatever they did. Um, yeah, so more things like that will vol follow. But of course, uh, the, the project should uh, be become bigger than just uh, stay in lab. So we, uh, of course, we will work on user interfaces and to documentation, open source tools. Um, but uh, yeah, in the future, uh, we'll also uh, possibly organ uh, organize meetups. Um, we have some hope that we will be able to host internships and fellowships. So yeah, if, if you have good ideas, let, uh, please let us know. Um, we have a, a Twitter account. Please follow, follow us and an email address, which you can send all your questions to. And I think that was the last slide, and I'm right on time, right? Okay.